Let's now substitute the Hamiltonian inside my Schrodinger equation. So what that means is that I'm going to be writing negative h bar squared over 2 times i. And that is multiplied by 1 over sine theta d by d theta. That operates on sine theta d by d theta. I'm going to add to that 1 over sine squared theta times d squared by d phi squared. That's going to be multiplied by y. And then what I'm going to get is e times y. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2i. I'm going to divide both sides by negative h bar squared. I'm going to multiply both sides also by sine squared theta. So here I'm going to write that out, multiplying both sides by sine squared theta. So there's sine squared theta, 1 over sine theta, d by d theta, sine theta, d by d theta, plus 1 over sine squared theta, d squared by d phi squared. And there's my y. And in this case, again, I have to multiply by sine squared theta, since I'm multiplying both sides by sine squared theta. Since I'm also multiplying both sides by 2i and dividing both sides by negative h bar squared, then it disappears from this side on the left-hand side, and it reappears on the right-hand side. So here's my negative 2 times i times e divided by h bar squared. And that is going to be multiplied by y. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now make one other substitution. And really, it's not a substitution, it's a simplification, where I'm just going to say beta is equal to 2 times i times e divided by h bar squared. And so if I do that, and if I basically multiply and distribute in this sine squared theta on the left-hand side, what I'm going to get is sine theta d by d theta. And that's operating on sine theta d by d theta plus d squared by d phi squared. That's going to all be multiplied with y. And that's going to be equal to negative beta sine squared theta times y. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply in from the right my y term on the left hand side and then I'm also going to move my right hand side over to the left hand side. So in that case what I'm going to get is sine theta d by d theta that operates on sine theta dy by d theta because again I'm multiplying in to the right hand side my y term so it ends up in both those places. So here I'm going to then add d squared y by d phi squared. And to that, I'm also going to be moving to the left-hand side this beta sine squared theta y term. And so my final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term with respect to phi, and I'm going to move it over to the left, or sorry, to the right-hand side. Sine theta d by d theta, sine theta dy by d theta plus beta sine squared theta times y. And that's equal to negative d squared y by d phi squared. Now at this point, you should start to notice that I've now moved anything that's a function of theta over here to the left-hand side, and anything that's a function of phi over here to the right-hand side. That's going to become important a little bit later. At this point, what I'm also going to define is that my solution to this differential equation, y, which is a function of theta and phi, I'm going to let that equal to be something of a function of theta, and it's then multiplied with something that's going to be a total function of phi. And so my next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take that solution, I'm going to plug it directly into this differential equation. So what that looks like is sine theta d by d theta sine theta dy by d theta. Well, in that case, I'm going to write d capital theta capital phi by d theta plus beta 
sine squared theta, capital theta, capital phi. And that's equal to negative d squared, capital theta, capital phi, divided by d by d phi squared. So in this case, I can start to bring out specific terms. The first one that I can indicate is that in this first differential here, this d theta by d, or this d theta phi by d theta, well, the phi isn't a function of theta at all. So it can come out to the front. So I would write capital phi sine theta d by d theta, because again, it isn't affected by the second differential either. And that leaves me with sine sine theta d capital theta by d theta. The second term, there's no differential, so this can stay as is. I'll just move the theta and phi out to the front. So beta times capital theta capital phi sine squared theta. And over here on the right hand side, well I've got a differential with respect to phi, so that means then that the theta is not affected by it, so I can move it out front, which means that I'm going to get negative capital theta d squared phi by d phi squared. And so what I can do now is I can divide both sides by capital theta and I can divide both sides by capital phi. And what that does for me is that it cancels out certain terms. For instance, if I divide both sides by a capital phi, well, I have a capital phi here and here on both of these terms. So they'll both go away, and I'll have a capital phi, like a 1 over capital phi on the right-hand side. And at the same time, if I divide both sides by theta, well, I've got a theta over here on the right-hand side, which I'll denote in a different color so it's more easily seen. So that term will disappear. I have one here in this term, so that one will disappear. So that means I'm only going to get one in the first term on the left-hand side. So that means I'm going to get sine theta divided by capital theta d by d theta sine theta d by d theta by d theta plus beta sine squared theta because both these terms now have canceled out or they've disappeared because I've divided both sides by theta and phi and that's equal to negative 1 over capital phi d squared theta or sorry d squared phi by d phi squared now the purpose to doing all this, I can summarize again by saying that when I pointed this out the first time up here, I said that I've now rearranged everything so that I've got a function of theta on the left hand side and a function of phi on the right hand side. But at that point, my function that I had written in, this y term, it was a function of both theta and phi. And so now that I've said, well, this function is a function of theta, times a function of phi, and I've substituted that in, I now have what we're at at this point, where I now have, again, all my functions of theta on the left-hand side and all my functions of phi on the right-hand side. But now the functions that are inside that I would actually solve for in this case, which I'm highlighting with, with red, whoops, wouldn't be there, it'd be down there. All of those functions, those are functions of either theta or phi. So I've completely now segregated the, the functions and the variables that they are a function of to either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And so now since I've got two different spatial coordinates completely separated from each other, but I have this equality between them. I have basically saying that anything that spins around one axis is related to the rotations around a different axis. And so the only way that these two things could be equal to each other is if we just let them be equal to some constant m squared. It has to equal some number. They have to be both rooted in the same value for, so that, again, that I have something spinning around one axis is equal to something spinning around a different axis, or at least the way that we describe these two directions or these two axes that these things are spinning around. And so based on that, I can write two separate differential equations that are single-order differential equations. The first one is the left-hand side, sine theta over capital theta, d by d theta, sine theta, d capital theta, d theta, plus beta sine squared theta. And that's going to be equal to m squared. And the second differential equation is totally as a function of phi which has to do with the right-hand side. Negative 1 over capital phi, 
d squared phi by d phi squared. And that also has to be equal to m squared. So now all we have to do is solve the differential equation that's defined in equation 1, and we'll solve for capital theta. We solve the differential equation that's defined in equation 2, which is a function totally of capital phi and, and phi itself. And then once we do that, then we can multiply those two values together, or those two functions together, and then we have our complete solution for the rigid rotator. We have our complete solution for y.